السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا إنه من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد My dear brothers and sisters our topic is about marriage the ingredients of happy marital life and it is the objective and the goal for every married couple to have happy marital life this is the dream of any two human beings living together so we'll try our best to shed some lights and giving some tips how about how to achieve and how to make our marital life happy and successful as you know my dear brothers and sisters the real wisdom behind the marriage is not the fulfillment of the biological needs the real objective the real goal is to maintain and to protect the human race from extinction because if there is no marriage that means there is no multiplication no children no progeny the human race will extinct so that is the wisdom behind the marriage the fulfillment of biological needs is only one but the real purpose behind it is to maintain the human race and for this reason Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us by saying in surah al-rum that surah number 30 verse 21 wa min ayatihi an khalaqa lakum min anfusikum azwajan litaskunu ilayha wa ja'ala baynakum mawaddatan wa rahma inna fi dhalika la ayatin liqawmi yatafakkaroon and among his signs is this that he created for you mates from among yourselves and that you may dwell in tranquility with them and he has put love and mercy between your hearts verily in that are signs for those who reflect so this is one of the signs of Allah that he created for us mates human beings like us we know that when God Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he created our father the first man Adam he created for him his mate our mother Hawa Eve from his rib so Allah created for us mates and he put this rahma and this kindness in our heart a woman before the marriage you didn't know her especially I'm talking now about Islam in Islam we don't have this uh, issue of dating and talk about all that stuff dating that has no room in Islam because in Islam the love comes after the marriage as Allah is saying here after the marriage love comes not before the marriage but subhanallah glory be to Allah and all praise is due to him the moment the marriage contract is signed and the wedlock is signed you feel that this woman is part of you and this love comes into being so this is what God Almighty reminds us that from his signs this is food for thought for people to reflect that he puts this Rahman kindness in your hearts Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created everything in pairs and of everything we have created pairs that you may receive instruction admonition everything you find male female male female even when we go to the inanimate kingdom 
we find the same. You have electrons and protons, negative charges, positive charges. Everything in pairs, husband, wife, in the animals, everything. This is a sign for us to reflect upon. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is hadith is in Bukhari. Some of the, his companions, they went to the household of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa They went to the wives of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and they asked about his uh, prayers at night and how he lives inside his house. Because by the way, my dear brothers and sisters, every human being has secrets in his life. He keeps to himself or herself, which we don't know. But the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu there is nothing hidden. There is no secret in his life. Everything you want to know about Prophet Muhammad sallallahu it's there in front of you. It's there in the books of Hadith. The things that he does at home, you can know. Outside, you can know. So there is nothing hidden. The reason that, because Allah sent him to be the example to follow, to follow his footsteps. He's the uswa, the example to follow. So when the companions, they asked, and they were told that the Prophet Sallallahu he would pray at night and he would sleep and he would fast and he would break his fast. The Sahaba said, okay, that's fine. Even if his deeds were not that much, but maybe a sufficient from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is enough. Because Allah has forgiven him all his sins. Though we know that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his ibadah, no one can, but that what appeared to them. Or that they compared their own ibadah to the Prophet Sallallahu and they thought that they have to do more than the Prophet Sallallahu or more good deed. But the Prophet Sallallahu is the example and no one can worship Allah better than the Prophet Sallallahu So the companions, some of them said, I will not marry the woman. Another one said, I will fast, I will not break my fast. And another one said, I will be praying the whole night. The news reached the Prophet Sallallahu and when he heard that, he got very angry and he said, no one among you can fear Allah more than I fear him. And whoever is not satisfied with my way is not from me. He told them that I marry women, I fast and break my fast, I pray and I sleep. This is my way. So here the Prophet ﷺ made it clear to everyone that you cannot leave them married, said, I don't want to, uh, to get married. So he was actually encouraging the youth to get married. In another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Oh young people, whoever among you can marry, should marry because it helps him lower his gaze, guard his modesty, and whoever is not able to marry should fast as fasting diminishes his sexual power. So he's telling the youth to get married, the young ones, because the problem of the men in particular, women, that's the problem. Temptations. So if a person is married, a young man is married, then that part or that door where temptations can creep is blocked, closed. My dear brothers and dear sisters, stay tuned. We'll be back, inshallah, after the break. Before the break, my dear brothers and sisters. So the companions, some of them said, I will not marry the woman. Another one said, I will fast, I will not break my fast. And another one said, I will be praying the whole night. The news reached the Prophet Sallallahu and when he heard that, he got very angry and he said, no one among you can fear Allah more than I fear him. And whoever is not satisfied with my way is not from me. He told them that I marry women, I fast and break my fast, I pray and I sleep. This is my way. So here the Prophet Sallallahu made it clear to everyone that you cannot leave them married, said, I don't want to, uh, to get married. So he was actually 
encouraging the youth to get married. In another hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu he said, Oh young people, whoever among you can marry, should marry, because it helps him lower his gaze, guard his modesty, and whoever is not able to marry, should fast as fasting diminishes his sexual power. So he's telling the youth to get married, the young ones, because the problem of the men in particular, women, that's the problem. Temptations. So if a person is married, a young man is married, then that part or that door where temptations can creep is blocked, closed. We were talking about the wisdom of the marriage. Because strong family is really the cornerstone for building strong community and strong ummah. Family is the main building unit because the society consists of family. There are also alarming figures about the divorce rate. The divorce rate is so high nowadays. If you go to the net and write divorce rate, you will see the figures. They will scare you. So that's why we need to know now how to help each other to have this happy marital life, the ingredients. So we'll go and start, inshallah, mentioning these ingredients. Number one, that the right choice. The th these things should be done before marriage. So there are things to be, should be done before the marriage. Among them, first thing is the right choice. What do you mean by the right choice? We mean by the right choice that you choose the right partner, whether you are a man or a woman, the right husband or the right wife. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, al khabithatu lil khabithin wal khabithuna lil khabithat wa tayyibatu lil tayyibin wa tayyibuna lil tayyibat. And women of purity are for men of purity. And men of purity are for women of purity. So tayyib for the tayyib, khabith for the khabith. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa also tells us in the authentic narration, he said in Bukhari Muslim, a woman may be married for four things or four reasons. For her property, status, beauty, and her religion. So try to get the one who's religious, may you be blessed. So here the Prophet ﷺ is telling us to choose the one who's religious, the one who fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is tip number one, or cause number one, which will make your marital life happy, that you made the right choice from the beginning. Because when you have the right partner next to you, there will be compatibility. Number two, seeing the wife to be. See, in Islam, it is permissible to see the wife to be, the woman whom you want to marry. Because here there are two extremes, and Islam is always striking the balance. In some communities, even today, you cannot see your wife to be, except on the night of the consummation, wedding night. Her family will not allow you to see her at all. They will say, send your family to see her. Send your mother, your sister, but not you. It is a black box. This is one extreme. The other extreme, no, you go out with the girl and you go to parties and fiance and he's your fiance and and that's it. So you are like husband and wife before the marriage. And people are seeing you and it's acceptable. Coming late to house, dropping her very late. No problem. Two extremes. And maybe then the boy decides not to marry the girl. 
So Islam says no to this extreme and also rejecting the other one. So here that Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and this hadith is authentic in Musnad Ahmad and Tirmidhi that a man came to the Prophet وسلم, and he said I propose to a woman to marry her. The Prophet وسلم, told him have you seen her? Did you see your wife to be the woman whom you are going to marry? He said no. The Prophet وسلم, told him then go and look at her. And he told him, the Ansar, because the woman whom he proposed to was from the Ansar. Ansar, the supporters, those who received the Prophet ﷺ in Medina. So he told him, go, because the Ansar, they have problem in their eye. So go and have a look at your wife-to-be. So seeing your wife, the woman whom you are going to marry. Also, the third thing that should be done before the marriage is the mahr, the bridal money, the dawah or the dowry, the bridal money that should be given to the woman should be moderate. Because in Islam, it is the man, I emphasize here on this point, it is the man who should give this mahr, the bridal money, to the wife-to-be. It's not the opposite. It's not the woman who should give money to the man to marry her. It's the opposite. It's the man. It is haram in Islam that the woman gives the man. This money has to be given by the man. So the bridal money or the mahar, it's the right of the wife upon the husband. Allah made it clear. Allah says, Surah An-Nisa, Surah number 4, Ayah, verse number 4. وَآتُ النِّسَاءَ صَدَقَاتُهُنَّ نِحْلَةً فَإِنْ طِبْنَا لَكُمْ عَنْ شَيْءٍ مِّنْهُ نَفْسًا فَكُلُوهُ هَنِيئًا مَرِيًا And give the women on marriage their dawa as a free gift. But if they, of their own good pleasure, remit any part of it to you, Take it and enjoy it with right, good cheer. So it is her right, the woman's right, to have this bridal money, the mahr. It's a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the husband has to give it to the woman. It's not the opposite. And unfortunately, this is what the Quran says, and yet you find some Muslims, they left what Allah says, what the Quran says, and they are asking the woman to give them money instead of them giving the woman their rights. Also, among the ingredients of marital life, which are, we mentioned the things that should be done before the marriage, now the fulfillment of the marital right. Because you know, my dear brothers and sisters, Islam is about rights and limits. So the marital life, there are rights on each one, each partner, he has rights on the other. But also rights and commitments, obligations. So we need to fulfill the marital rights. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعَاشِرُوهُنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ Live with them, your wives, on a footing of kindness and equity. This is how you deal with your wife. This is how you live with your wife. Kindness, justice. Also Allah says, وَلَهُنَّ مِثْلُ الَّذِي عَلَيْهِنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ And women shall have rights similar to the rights against them, according to what is equitable. The interpreter of the Qur'an, Abdullah ibn Abbas عنهمه, he said, by Allah, I adorn myself, I beautify myself, I make myself presentable to my wife, in the same way I expect her to be, the same way I want her to look, 
nice, beautiful, I do the same thing because that is her right. And then he mentioned this verse, the ayah. There are different types of rights. Husband's rights over the wife and the wife's rights over the husband. The husband's rights over his wife. Number one is what is known as al qawama Man is the head of the family. This is what Allah has given the man. Man is the head of the family. And he is the protector. الرجال قوامون على النساء بما فضل الله بعضهم على بعض وبما أنفقوا من أموالهم Men are the protectors and maintainers of women because Allah has given the one more strength than the other and because they support them from their means. So this is the qawama. So the man is responsible, he is the one in charge. He's the one who will be held accountable before Allah about his family. So this is his right. He is the head of the family. And always there should be a leader. Always. If there's no leader, there is chaos. And life has to be organized. So a head for the family, head of the state. So this is the law. Even in the kingdom of animals, there will be always a head. The herd, there will be only one leading that. So this is the right of the husband. Allah has given this right because Allah is just. Allah didn't wrong the woman. But it's the man who is most suitable for this position. Because he's the bread gainer. He's the maintainer. He's the protector for his family. So this is his right. The second right of the husband over his family, his wife, is obedience that involves not any haram act. A woman in Islam should obey her husband. And when you obey your husband, not because he's the man or not because he... No, because you obey Allah. Obeying your husband, you are actually obeying your creator who commands you to obey your husband. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make the marital lives of all of us happy and successful. Ameen. I am a Muslim. I am a Muslim. Family around.